Live from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE. Covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. Welcome back to the Windy City, everybody. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage, where we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is our second day at Veeam On 2018. Our second year, I'm Dave Vellante with Stu Miniman, my co-host. Phil Goodwin is here. He's a research director at IDC's Storage Systems and Software Group. Phil, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Pleasure to be here today. So, you've been to more Veeam Ons than, than we have, so you've seen even a, a, a greater evolution. Although, we've been to a lot of V mugs. We, we saw a lot of green. So, this company has painted Chicago in green. What's your take on the progression and ascendancy of of Veeam beyond just being a virtualization specialist? Sure, the, obviously the most interesting thing about Veeam is how they really have become the high growth leader of this industry and, and in many ways kind of the darling of the industry because they've got a lot of the momentum, a lot of the attention that's going on in the data protection and recovery software space. I think what has really struck me over the years of these Veeamon conferences, and, and really from the very first one that I attended uh, three years ago, is the degree to which there is an ecosystem that's been built up around the products that they have for things like disaster recovery as a service, backup as a service, and so forth, where people take the Veeam software, build it into their own products, and go to market with that. And I think that's totally unique in the way they've done that compared to many of their competitors. You, you, let's see, we're talking about 800 plus million dollars in bookings, yep. 30, mid 30% growth rates. I presume the data protection market's not growing that fast. <laughs> no, it, although it's surprisingly strong. Last year uh, it grew at about 7% rate. Yeah, uh, we don't expect it to keep going that fast, but if you compare that to other storage software, which is one to 2%, or in some cases even negative, that it's actually an area that, that's quite bright. Yeah, it's grown much, much faster than the overall IT business, right? Very, I mean, oh yeah, absolutely. And, and so, well, why? Why is it growing faster? Well, part of it's driven by capacity. A lot of the vendor models are associated with the capacity and so they charge upgrades every year and as uh, data is growing at about 40% per year on a compound annual growth rate, that does cause customers to upgrade their licenses. Uh, but we're also seeing an acceleration in the deployment of applications. So we expect IT organizations, according to our research, to add an additional 200 applications over the next 36 months. That's not a lot of new applications. What we find in many cases is what we would call the traditional incumbent vendors who have their footprint within the enterprise uh, maintain that footprint in many cases, but those new applications have the opportunity to bring in new products and, and that's really where the opportunity for Veeam is. So, so part of the growth is somewhat artificial if I understand it in that it's, it's pricing driven. Absolutely. And so that would suggest, you know, given that data protection is largely insurance, that some, you know, the CFOs are going to look at that line and say, oh, this isn't sustainable. Right, um, right. Uh, unless, and I want to run this by you, we, you know, research indicates that, that Fortune 1000 companies leave you know, over a three to four year period, billions of dollars each on the table because of just not the most end to end or well thought out architected uh, uh, data protection solutions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, you know, maybe that expands the TAM a little bit, uh, but, but is that kind of growth sustainable? You've already sort of indicated it's not, but maybe talk about that a little bit. Right, what, what, the nature of threats has really changed a lot over the years too. So if you look back on computing, it used to be system failure, human error, and to some degree natural disaster were your biggest threats. Nowadays it's actually ransomware, malware, and other things that are, that are much bigger threats than, than the traditional types of threats that organizations have dealt with. So as the evolution of um, data protection has come about, what we found is very much a, a willingness among IT organizations to not simply try and go with a single product, but to rather buy a best-in-class product for specific platforms. So in the case of Veeam, I think they really did a very successful job of riding the virtual infrastructure wave when most of their competitors were architected specifically for second platform types of applications. Yeah, Phil, and one of the interesting things to watch in Veeam is their expansion beyond that virtualization. What, what, what insight can you give us about 
data protection in SaaS, in public cloud, in service providers, a lot of those environments you would think the, the platform or the provider might have a choice, so you know, how, how does Veeam get in there? How much do customers really have choice there? That's really a great point because what is happening is we're moving data protection from the system level, we've moved it up to the virtualization layer, and now it's really moving to the application layer, where it is the application developer who's building that data protection directly into their application. So what we're seeing is those application developers, which as you mentioned, are, are many are SaaS applications on the web, uh, building the data protection into their, into their specific environment. But the other thing that's happening is IT organizations are suddenly realizing that much of that data that is in the web or with those SaaS applications is not being protected according to the, the SLAs of the organization. So they're using third party tools and applications like Veeam to bring that data back on site and to protect it according to, the, to what the, the requirements and governance requirements are. Okay, so let's unpack some of this. So if I understood it correctly, is that a, the, the, going back to the developers mm -hmm. as, as architecting in the data protection yep. approach, is that a, a result of the DevOps trend, uh, infrastructure as code, or is it something else driving that? I think it's more being driven by the fact that, that these are discrete applications outside the data center. So if I'm inside the data center and I'm trying to protect 100 different applications, I may try and apply the same techniques to all of them and the same policies. But these are applications like Salesforce.com or Payday or other applications that are really, for lack of a better term, a single application. Yeah. And so that environment really doesn't have to consider the other systems within a, a data center. Yeah, so it's a SaaS guy saying one size fits all, there the, the, you go. For them, which, yes, that's which, exactly right. Which, by the right. way, is, a, is, a, is an age old problem inside the data center. It was right. like either you were not protected enough or you were paying too much. So, so do, do companies like Veeam solve that problem by providing more granularity and maybe aligning better with SLS? Yeah, the, they, they go and attack the problem in a couple of different ways. First of all, they certainly have their traditional uh, business within the data center, but they're also partnering with many of the cloud-based organizations like Azure and, and Amazon and, and others to be able to, to help organizations protect data they have in the cloud. Plus, they're working with specific applications to be able to provide that kind of protection for a SaaS app. Okay, and I want to come back to something you were talking about with Stu about best of breed. So, we do a lot of these shows, you talk to a lot of customers and a lot of, of, of technology companies. You get two ends of the spectrum. You get the best of breed guys like Veeam, say hey, we're best of breed. Why would you buy that old, clunky, outdated, you know, backup, you know, capability? And then you, t you, you, you without naming names, you get the integrated, you know, full stack companies going, why would anybody buy from you know, some tiny little company? Oh, yeah, okay, they're 800 million, but they can't do digital transformation and big data and SaaS and blah, blah, blah. Sure. So why would anybody, who cares about backup? Okay, so you have two completely counterpoised positions. Yep. How can you help us parse through that? I think a lot of it comes down to who is the actual consumer and buyer of the, of the solution, and that's indeed changing. Mm -hmm. What we're seeing much more is it is the application developer, the application provider, or even the line of business making the decision as to how those, or what applications are being deployed, as opposed to the central IT organization. So whereas a central IT organization say, May, this is part of digital transformation, uh, the business unit may be buying other applications. We talked a little earlier about money being left on the table. I don't know what your research shows, but, but clearly there's opportunities there that's not, you know, not being harvested today. Mm -hmm. From a cost-benefit analysis standpoint, I know it's one area that you, you focus on and spend some mm -hmm. time there. Is it a reasonable expectation that CFOs will actually look at that lost opportunity, that, that soft revenue that they're losing, which all, really is not that soft, uh, and say, hey, we actually need to increase our spending in this area? Some of them, yes. What you really find is a maturity curve, of course, where you have some of the some organizations uh, that that really have a very traditional view and and have not tried to to move forward. But our research is showing that about 60% of organizations have embarked on some kind of digital transformation, and that about 70% have a cloud-first uh, perspective. So. 
those organizations really are looking at those kinds of opportunities, both in terms of cost, opportunity cost, or absolute cost, and saying, how can we optimize this environment uh, entirely? Yeah, I mean, if I were the CFO, I, and I had, let's say I had the cash, so I wasn't capital constrained, I would still say, look, this is insurance, so f figure out a way to get more value out of this data. You got all this data in the, in the backup repository. What can we do with that? What analysis can we do? Can we, can we uh, maybe be more efficient with regard to how we do security? Can we, you know, can, you know it's like the, the US government. Can we have this agency talk to that agency and figure out a way we can get more leverage? I'd really be putting pressure on them to do that. Is that an unreasonable expectation for CFOs? No, and in fact, what, what our research has shown is that about 40% of organizations use their backup data sets for analytics. Mm -hmm. They also, about 30% of them, 33%, use it for other purposes, such as development and test, staging, others. So organizations really are trying to leverage that vast amount of information that they have for other purposes. One of the challenges that come out though is GDPR, the European uh, uh, regulation to the right to be forgotten and, and the way organizations have to be able to, to manage that data. Going into those data repositories, including backup data sets to say, okay, this is data that we have to expunge by regulation. Yeah, Phil, I, I wonder, there's, you know, we've been talking about the, the threats of GDPR and you, know, you might get sued or everything. For year, the last few years, we've really been talking about how we get insights and data, uh, you know, in, insights and you know, can transform businesses around data. Is GDPR a threat to this whole wave of getting value out of data? I don't think it's a threat to getting, a, the, to getting the value out of the data. I think it's a threat to how you manage that data. And the, the threat is much more widespread than, than many organizations realize. If you're doing business with anyone who is European or has traveled to Europe, and, and really any kind of footprint in that regard can potentially put your organization at risk if you're capturing any of that data. But I mean, I, that, that stat you just threw out was pretty interesting that 40% of the organizations that you surveyed are actually doing some types of an analytics with their, their backup data. I would think that governance and compliance, you know, GDPR related stuff, they're going to take, those 40% are going to take a, a similar uh, uh, approach to GDPR. Say, okay guys, we got to do this find some more value out of yes, it, you know, yes. or else get you in a headlock. So, right? right? I mean, is, that's, I, that's a huge number for Right, and, and one of the ways you do that is, and, and, and that Veeam has done, is to open up APIs, application programming interfaces, to allow third party organizations to leverage that data repository and, and do that kind of analytics. Veeam themselves or any other backup vendor can't really leverage, or can't really do that, but by opening that up to third parties, it, it increases that ecosystem and increases the value that IT organizations can get from their data and their investment. Uh, some of your research, maybe you could uh, highlight some of, the, some of the stuff you're proud of, fun stuff you've been working on, things that are you know, current, recent, that you want to highlight to the audience. Right, I, I think some of the interesting things, the trends in the industry really are that the kinds of things like backup and recovery and high availability and disaster recovery, we, re we see really going into a continuum of availability where if I can move data across geographies and I can recover my application seamlessly regardless of where the data is, why do I ever need to have uh, disaster recovery again? And in fact, that's where we believe availability is going. And in fact, the theme for, for Veeam at this show is hyper-availability. One of the ways you do that is by placing the data in the right locations for that kind of recovery. So watching you know, from the days of, of backing up once a day onto tape to continuous availability is actually a pretty interesting development. So who's doing a good job in this space? I mean, it sounds like you know, Veeam is getting it done, obviously, and the numbers speak for themselves. Sure. You got the startups, Cohesity, Rubric, you know, Zerto obviously plays in there. Yep. You got you know Veritas is you know re, supposedly retooling. Yep. You had Bill Coleman in there, yep. former BEA guy, who's you know supposedly put a lot of R and D into that. You got the the leader in 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 Dell, mm -hmm. EMC. Uh, obviously, they have a lot of resource, spend a lot of money. They're going through a, a retooling process. IBM has software defined everything. Yep. It seems like it's jump ball right now. It's sort of wide open in it, this space. It, it really is see? because you look at you mentioned Dell EMC. They're focusing on IoT. Well, IoT generates 
a phenomenal amount of data. What data needs to be captured, how does it need to be captured, protected, and managed is going to be a huge issue for organizations. So that's a very interesting target. Mm -hmm. Veritas has been looking at their uh, 360 data management and really taking a holistic view of, of data management uh, and they're doing some very interesting things there. Um, Commvault has done actually a pretty nice job of getting into some cloud-related kinds of things. So, uh, and, and then finally, as you mentioned, Rubrik and Cohesity, I would put them along with Veeam as probably the three companies that right now are disrupting this industry the most. Uh, there, there are probably certainly some other ones uh, that are up and coming, but in, in terms of those that are really providing some disruption, I would, I would probably go with those three. Cool. All right, they're breaking down uh, Veeam on 2017, the exhibit on Phil, thanks so much for coming to theCUBE. Great stuff, really good analysis, appreciate you having on. Pleasure, guys. All Take right, care. keep it right there, everybody. We're, we're, the trains are backing up, we're trying to jam everything in before they shut down our studio, so we'll be right back right after this short break.